Yeah, today we're going to do a tour of Denny Rivier where we used to call the Gulf before. Now this is about the start of Denny Rivier. This is where I consider Denny Rivier to start. Okay. So So on the left here is a place where they make blocks, they sell blocks. Now to the right is the Denny Rivier Combined School. This is the, the school here as the Denny Rivier Combined School. Alright, that's the children's school there. So that's the Denny Rivier Combined School. Uh, shop on the left side. This is a car wash on the left. So the first place we're going to go, we're going to go to make a right and go to Austin Hill. All right. So Ferguson. Now that road used to be such a nice road and now it is messed up. All right. Yeah. All right. That's Austin Hill. Denny Rivier is one of the places that was producing one of, um, some of the most bananas in the valley. And there was a time in Denny Rivier, almost every weekend, somebody would buy a new van here during the time of banana production and um, green gold. All right. So, it looks like they start. That road is a concrete road now. Very good, very good. Now, this is Denny River again, as you know. On the left side, here, yeah, on the left side, there was a, a, a small track going all the way down. And that place has a lot of clay. I used to live over there when I was a boy growing up. I used to live over there and sometimes and anytime it rained it used to be very bad coming from there to go to school and my mother would carry me on her back so that my shoes wouldn't get dirty us especially around September when school opened the first week my mother would carry on me on her back and sometimes all the time too or sometimes I had to take an old pair of shoes and then put my good my school shoe by the road that's how bad it was you know but there are a lot of clay in that area Kandos. so this is austin hill so the the thing is the name the thing is after a man named austin actually that's the man shop here all right the man died many years ago and um but he's he was mr austin and the whole hill was named after him so that is Austin Hill. All right. Now, if you 
continue going straight up there there are a few houses up there and there's some farms up there but i'm not going to go i'm just going to reverse and go back all right So this is Austin Hill and they used to call her a lemon but I used to live lower down and the one thing man this place when it rains it's real messy because the clay is very thick very thick clay So we're going down. Uh. There is a man I saw in his balcony sleeping, Mr. Gordon. Everything changed when you grow older, you know, man. When you get old, everything changed. That man was a viable man, now I see he's sleeping in the balcony in broad daylight. You know I never heard about that boy? The fellow who was in the accident? Yeah. Yeah, I never heard about him. Morning, morning. Yeah, so this was Austin Hill. Just trying to give people a general idea of what Avas, of what Benny Rivia is, what the Gulf is. Because some people never came to this place. Some people, they will stay all their lives in one community, never go to see nothing else. They will die and never see their own country. And somebody who come from another place, another country, know more about their place than them. Yeah. Some people, when they were living in places like Castries, they look at these places here like it's Afghanistan they, they, um, they're talking about. Okay, that's the, that's the Denny Rivier Apostolic Faith Church. It, was, it used to be the Denny Rivier, um, it is the Denny Rivier Pentecostal Church. It was called the Apostolic Church before. Alright, I used to go to church there a long time ago. Hey, Miss Ida. Yes. So I'm going to go make a left turn and go to Mont Panache. Yeah, we have the bakery on the left side there. Coach. The, eh, eh. Yeah, go in. The Coach Bakery, the biggest bakery in the valley, is on the left. All right. So we're going to go up this hill. That place is called Mont Panache. This is Mont Panache Denier Rivier. But there is also a Mont Panache in Grand Rivier. Alright. There's a Mont Panache in Grand Rivier. That hill. I used to climb that hill a lot because we had a farm on the top over there. So that road has been around for a while now. Okay. That road has been around for a while. Oh, 
Okay. So let me show the people outside there. So that's where that's where our farm used to be, our banana farm. Long time ago, there was a house over here after a while. But this is the place where our banana farm used to be. Okay, so used to have to carry the bananas from under the hill, down here, down there, and carry these things up this hill and bring them up. And there was a banana shed where that house is here. There used to be a banana shed somewhere around there. Okay. So the place has changed tremendously over a period of time. We have seen some significant changes here. All right. There is a house there right now. But that's where our banana farm used to be. All right. So the, it used to go all in the area over, over there. Okay. Now, there is a poem that I want to give you a, a few lines in. Now, there is a guy in, this man named Martin Numola. Martin Numola. He lived from 1892 to 1984. So he, used, he was a preacher man and he was also a politician, I think. And um, he observed that when Hitler was doing all the damage and taking the people, nobody was saying anything. And even the people that were more knowledgeable or, or even the educated people knew what, was, knew what Hitler was doing and knew what he was doing was wrong and they never said anything until everybody was messed up by his actions. So here goes the um, poem. First, he talking about the Nazis, eh? the Nazi soldiers. First they came for the communists and I did not speak out because I was not a communist. Then they came for the socialists and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me and there was no one to speak out for me. Okay, the reason why I, inter I bring about this poem in the middle of that um, little uh, documentary that I'm making here about Daniel Rivier is to talk about a certain situation that is taking place in the um, in St. Lucia. So right now, based on what I'm hearing is, the civil servants, their salaries are going to be cut in half, some of them, and then the rest, they're going to give it to them in some kind of bonds or something, something like that. So basically, the economy is not nice, and the government looks like it is not able to pay civil servants. But what happened is, this is an, an indictment on our mentality, on our attitude in this country. That is what has caused those things to happen. Because the civil servants and all of us, we know that there are atrocities that are taking place in terms of the, um, the way that money is being spent in the country and we say nothing. We see a bridge, for example, the Badawans Bridge. When you look at that bridge, to me, in my opinion, based on what I understand, and I have looked at projects before, that bridge, in my opinion, should not cost more than five million EC dollars. All right, but they they present a bill and they tell you that that bridge costs fifteen million dollars. Check the if you have to go across the country, and check the programs and the different bridges that we have, and the different projects that we have. And when you look at those things. Some of these projects, it look like these things are heavily padded to cost three times what they actually cost. So when you have this kind of thing going on for many years, you will result in a situation where you will bankrupt the country. And that's what is happening. So you're telling me that just because St. Lucia did not really work for three months, for, for probably four weeks or whatever, that we cannot pay our civil servant? I will not agree with that. When we had situations 
where a small bridge, you all charge five times what it's supposed to be. You understand? Look at these projects that we had, and we can know, and we can see. And they are, the civil servants are some of the most intelligent people in the country, book-wise, I think. And at the end of the day, they know that some of these projects do not come close to these things, and they say nothing. Just like the, the guy was saying a while ago, they came for the communists, and I said nothing because I was not a communist. They say nothing. Why, you know? A lot of, a lot of St. Lucians, what they say is, I have my mortgage to pay, I have my children to, to feed, I'm not going to say anything. Okay, you keep quiet and you let wicked people do wicked things, now everybody has to pay for it. That is what's happening. And anytime a St. Lucian, a St. Lucian is talking against the bad things that are happening, the mismanagement of the um, country, they will criticize him. If, those, if that person has a, jo a, a job, he will not get a promotion. He will just die in that job. There are people that are very competent in the country. They retire and they never got a promotion of significance. Why? Because they speak against bad things that are happening in the country. And so, just like this man is saying, they came for this one and I said nothing. And now, when they came for me, there was no one, there was no one to say, leave me alone. And that is what's happening. In St. Lucia, there is a culture here where people do not, just because they want to get big jobs, big salary, big promotion, they do not speak against the bad in this country. Now everybody has to pay for it. Your salary has to be cut by half. Whereas all along, people notice that some of these bridges don't cost that much. Some of these government projects don't cost that much. Yet they say it. You people are intelligent people. You all are engineers and all of those things. And yet you say nothing. You let it go on year after year because you want, all you're concerned about is your big job to buy your Jeep and to mess around in the country. That is what it is. So right now, the, 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 the axe is going to come down because when they came for the communists, you said nothing because you were not a communist. When they came for the Jews, you said nothing because you were not a Jew. Your political affiliation, your political party that you support is more important to you than anything in this country. And that is the problem that we have in this place. That is the problem that we have in this country. This is the problem that we're experiencing. So as we on this Daniel Riviera tour, I just thought that I had to get this thing off my chest. So what's happening is going forward, in this country, we cannot allow anybody, any politician, to just do what they want in their country and think it's going to be business as usual. Because if you do not say anything, if you do not act, you're going to pay for it. Your children are going to pay for it. Now, I feel sorry for um, the Prime Minister now, Alan Chastney, because this man did not cause what is happening there. This man is basically paying for the sins of other people. You understand? People mess around for years, and it became a habit, and the bad behavior became a culture in the country. And right now, Alan Chastney, you're paying for it. So, it is not anything you did, Alan, Prime Minister, it's not anything you did that caused you to be in that situation. But I will just encourage you to be strong, be strong, and do the best that you can for the people. And I am encouraging us as St. Lucians, do not get partisan politics in this thing. That because you feel like you're supporting um, Labour Party, that everything that will happen or everything the Prime Minister do is wrong. And when the other party, Labour Party, is in power, they would have probably done the same thing. We need to think about the country right now. Okay? So, let's think about that situation, that poem I just showed you a while ago. Yeah, so we. We live in uh, Mont Panache now. This is Mont Panache. We're getting down here. We're getting out. And if you see, you just look on the other side. You will see that community, that the, the place where you see the houses on the other side, the other road on the other side. That's where we came from. That's Mont. That's Austin Hill. We just came from that side a while ago. All right. You know, in that area over there, sometimes we used to pass in the. There was a track down that side. We used to pass to come here because to avoid that hill, we used to make a shortcut and to come up to come up here. There used to be a lady making bread, um, local bread over there, Miss Elaine. Miss Elaine is in Atlanta right now. 
If Miss Elaine, if you're hearing that, have a nice day. Keep the fire burning, be strong. So, we're just getting off of Mount Panache now. That's Mount Panache, Denier Rivier. Pa Mount Panache, going via. Say, day day for Mount Panache. Alright, so. This is Coach Bakery. This is the biggest bakery in the valley. Okay. Oh. So, right now, I'm driving up. Hello. Here, that area here is called Babawa. Alright. This area is called Babawa. And on the left side, that is the famous Pastor Augustine. Yeah. So when I was around here a long time ago, all of these things would be bananas. Now I see they have houses in this area, but there were no houses, there are probably a few. Probably a few houses, but right now you have um, thing everywhere now. You have houses everywhere. We live in Babawa now. This is Babawa, as I told you. This place is well built now, but before it, a lot of farms used to be around here. Bananas. There were some houses, but not all these houses that you see there right now. Yeah. All right, so this is Swamp PT here. That area we in here now is Swamp PT. I used to live in that area also a long, 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 long time ago. So, this is Swamp PT here. Yeah. Paul Rivier is out there. So, are we going to turn here? Now, that road goes to a place they call Monday Z. That's where Nati Conqueror, the reggae singer, he a few, he drive a few miles in the in the hills. That's where he lives. But that's the road today to Nati Conqueror place. So, just wanted to show you that river here. That river, it used to be, the water used to be more um, flowing better than that. There used to be more volume in the water, but I don't know, maybe because of the month. That's the river I used to bathe in, low, especially lower down. There was a piece, there was a piece of rock that the water was passing over it. That's where I used to bathe. And higher up too there was there is a, an area there too where there is like a deep area there are two of them people used to come there especially after school when school closed and things like that but sometimes that's where i used to come and bathe sometimes and i used to really enjoy it okay but it was much deeper than this than the way it is right now all right so this is the we back on to the main daniel river road we just getting out of the Rivier. What we're trying to do, we're trying to get out of the Rivier. Now there was a time in the 90s, this place was called the Gulf because when the banana industry collapsed and the banana was, the, the money wasn't coming, people got involved 
in other things. You know what I'm saying? And the drug trade was lucrative to some and some people got involved and um, there was a lot of crime in the whole of St. Lucia and some of that thing spill off here too. We know that when people were making money in bananas, we never used to have all these problems at that time. But one of the prime ministers came and, t and saying on TV or wherever he said it on a platform that um, something, some stupidness like crime, um, for, um, unemployment doesn't bring crime. Okay, that's one of the things he said. All right, I'm going to show you a backtrack before I leave. Remember that this, we make a left by the Denny Rivier School on this concrete road here. This is the back of the Denny Rivier School here. All right, so we're going right along. That's a part of Denny Rivier called Form Our Set. You understand? Hey, boy. South Africa, so come to my way. Yeah, so. This area here, um, that road, when you go left, it takes you to God. Everybody know, well, take to God and God ultimately. All right? So that area is called from our set. When I was a young boy growing up, there used to be a dance hall in that area there. That the dance hall is still at this. This is the dance hall, an old dance hall. That was one of the most popular places, man, to be. But at that time, you know, I was not um, of age to go to dance. And even when I became of age to go to dance, I was not really on dance vibe. All right. So, we come out of there. So we're back on the road going back towards Larishus. So we're still in the near Rivier. And um, it's a very sad thing because a lot of the places where people used to be doing some serious farming, these places are now abandoned. These places are now abandoned. And it is a shame to see we importing things like pigeon peas in St. Lucia and where we, we can be producing those things here. We have all these abandoned farms here and yet we're importing those things. And the other thing is these governments in St. Lucia have been frustrating the farmers a lot. You'll get farmers planting tomatoes and then when you're ready to sell, the hotel people and others bring um, tomatoes in containers here and you can't sell. So what happened is we need to really look at that tourist business thing that we have in this country again, especially in light of what is happening. And we cannot have tourism. Tourism cannot, as time go by or in the future, be leading the economy again. We can, if it decide to live, to lead on its own resources, yeah. But the government can't put all that money in advertisement for tourism and other things and neglecting the foundation of the country, which is farming. Any big country, Canada, America, any of those places, the foundation of these places, the foundation and the base of all of these countries is basically agriculture. England, America, all of these countries, they build planes, they send satellites, they send um, satellites to space, and yet their base, they never leave agriculture. And we that don't have much, we tend, to, we now want to leave farming and go into other things. How many tourists do landed in this country? No plane land in this country if tourists today. Or for weeks, no plane landed in St. Lucia. So we have to really restructure our, our um, economy in this country. And agriculture has to be the foundation of that.